Hi, I'm Tyro Man. I'm at Waka Stock and Con 2016, and I'm talking with Nesta Cabanel. How are you doing, sir? Tyro Man, it is a pleasure. I, I played a superhero once, but I don't think he was as, as heroic as Tyro Man. I played a guy named Bat Manuel. Oh, but, cool. Many One, moons ago. Many moons ago? Yeah. Was that for uh, animated? Or it was. Uh, it was a live-action live show, a version of The Tick, which I hear is coming <laughs> back to Amazon in a, in a different incarn incarnation. But uh, but it was fun. Oh, cool. But you, you you do a great Tyro <laughs> man. I, I try. I try. So tell us a little bit about the uh, series you in the Base Motel. Uh, I'm here actually with one of my castmates, uh, Max Herriot. We're, we do Base Motel. We're about to embark on our fifth season and uh, in our last season. Uh, oh. So so it's bittersweet. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, but we're, it's a modern day reimagining, for those who haven't seen them, of, uh, of, of Psycho. And it sort of takes the premise of Psycho and makes it, uh, you know, present day. And it's sort of, uh, it's just a twist on it. And uh, we'll carry it through uh, elements of Psycho this season. And, uh, and we'll see what else, other twists the writers come up with. Ah, that sounds like fun. It was a great movie, Psycho. I it's, ama it's amazing and it's, Classic. absolutely. And it's sort of cinematic hall hallowed ground, so it's, uh, our writers are amazing and treading very carefully and, and paying homage to, to Hitchcock at every turn yeah. and then also obviously putting their own spin so but no it's been a, a dream job. Uh, right. So what are you looking forward to after this wraps up? Do you have any plans? Um, still... no, nothing still yet. No, nothing yet right now. We're still we still have we're, we're still we're gonna shoot all the way through uh, through January so okay. there's, there's a bit of time but um, you know I have some things in production uh, or rather in development some things I've written so hopefully get oh, one of those cool. off the ground. That'd be great. And now, how did you get started in acting? Like, what was like? Your start um, your I got before? started in uh, in college. I uh, I sort of got bitten by the bug in college, and I studied it there, and, and then continued beyond that, and uh, started mostly theater. A uh, little bit New York, and then uh, and then some in L.A. So. What was your first role that year? The first role, role the first role was off Broadway. It was a two character role called A Silent Thunder, at the Apple Corps Theater on the west side of New York, off Broadway, and uh, that that's sort of what launched me and really got me. Um, it just it just got me really intrigued about learning more about the craft and and, and just getting better, uh, and then from then on I went to do uh, film, TV, and and uh, and more theater in San Diego. Cool, cool. Now, what would you say is the hardest part of being an actor? Like, what's the biggest challenge? You know, now that I'm a family man, the hardest thing is is juggling, especially when everything shoots outside of Los Angeles. Is is juggling, obviously, family life and 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 work and finding that balance, and that that's that's uh, that's a struggle. But. Uh, but you know, I get to do what I love, and you know, and, yeah. and it sounds like you're getting to do what you love as well. So, yeah, I uh, so uh, I, I know we, you try and strike right, a balance. Right, right. So, do you have a website if people want to follow you? And you know, I'm only on sure. I'm only on Twitter. I'm on uh, yeah. you know at, at Carbonell Nestor on Twitter, uh, and I, I I read everyone's tweets. I try and keep right. up in between that and family. Uh, keeps me busy. So have you done a lot of conventions, or is this like no, no, not, not not many. I'm just here really for Bates Motel okay. with with Max. Uh, been, I have been to Comic Con uh, in San Diego, uh, I think about five or six times now. Oh, wow. with, with Lost and also that's, that's with Bates, yeah, cool. which has been a, an, another treat as well. But uh, yeah. but I love love meeting fans. I love talking to fans, and we just did a, a great panel with uh, with uh, many many fans from Bates, which was was uh, was a lot of fun, to, especially cool. to doing it with Max. Right. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for taking time to meet us. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks, thanks for coming around. Okay, thank All right, you. Tyra, man. Hey, bye bye. <laughs>so what would you say is your masterpiece creation to date so far? Oh man. Um, I know it's hard to pick a favorite child. But well, <laughs> my favorite, uh, for the History Channel, I did this uh, this show called uh, 10,000 BC. Oh, okay, and cool. um, I created a, a life-size woolly mammoth and saber-toothed tiger puppet. And, oh, wow. Yeah, that was some, you know, because I do zombies all day long. You know, it's nice to depart from that and do something a little different once in a while. Okay, cool. So you work for the Walk Stalker show, you want to... Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I do all the Walker Stalker uh, events, and you know, I have a good time. Right, cool, cool. But do you work on the show doing the special effects? No, there, no, okay. no. They, uh, those are all K and B guys, and okay. uh, most of them live down in Atlanta. Um, I haven't made that move yet, but I'm probably going to in the new year. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
So you won Face Off. How did you do on that show? I did well. Uh, first season, um, I got second place, and then second season uh, was also a runner-up. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah, it was a good time. It's done great things for my career. You know, the first film that I did after Face Off was The Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, you know, awesome. so it definitely you know kicked my stock up a little bit. Oh, great, great. So how did you get started in special effects? Like, did you see like I don't know, old Harry Houston films? And, uh, no, yeah, I used to know? watch those, uh, but it was mostly it was Michael. Jackson's Thriller. I saw oh, okay. the behind the scenes where Rick Baker was doing all the makeup and uh, once I figured out the monsters weren't real and then there was a job where you could make them, I, <laughs> I was sold. So, it's five years old, I knew what I was going to do. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. great. So, what is the most challenging part, would you say? Of oh, it would be Face Off. Face Off is ridiculous. It's like boot camp for effects artists, you know? It's just... Uh, it just takes a lot of patience, you know. Um, you know, creating the monsters isn't the hardest part. Oddly enough, it's you know, living in a house with a bunch of people you don't know for three months. You know, I, I'm kind of a private type guy, so you know that, and that's absolutely the opposite of a private situation. So, yeah, that's the rough part. But you know, every day we get to go to the shop, make monsters, and it's a lot, a lot easier to deal with that. What advice would you give to somebody who wants to get into that field? Um, just practice. Uh, everybody, you know, these days we live in a time of, you know, people want a quick response. Everyone wants to call themselves an effects artist now. You know, take your time. There's no rush. Practice. Because if you go throwing your work out there too early and people see it, they're not going to hire you if you're not ready. So, you know, take your time. Finesse your work. Practice right. on painting, sculpting. You know, there's no need to rush. Right. Face Off will be around for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good show. It's yeah, fun. it's yeah. fun. It seems to be doing pretty well. So, what are you working on now? Like, what's the next project you're um, working on? I'm. Uh, I just directed a feature, and uh, now I'm. I'm uh, getting into development for my next feature. Uh, I'm also doing special effects on uh, the Puppet Master reboot. Um, so I get to make all the puppets and everything. So, yeah, I'm very busy. Things are going really well, though. Wow, sounds it. Sounds it. Yeah. <laughs> Time. So do you have a website people want to check you out? Yeah, if you guys want to see my work, uh, you could follow me by my name, Tate Steinzik, on Instagram. Uh, it's illwilledfx, the letter F, the letter X, on Twitter. Or uh, just my name, Tate Steinzik, on Facebook. My official website is illwilled.com, I-L-L-W-I-L-L-E-D.com. Cool, cool. So are you going to a lot of conventions? Is yeah, I do all the Walker Stalkers. If you guys want to come say hi, just look at the uh, Walker Stalker website, find a date near you, and come say hello. All right, cool. Well, thanks for taking time to talk to us. Appreciate it. Yeah, take care. Nice to meet you. All right, thanks. Hi, I'm Tyro Man. I'm at Walker Stalker Con 2016. Hey, I'm talking to Kane Hodder. How you doing, Kane? I'm good. Good to see you. And you play Jason in 7, 8, seven, and 9. Eight, nine, ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. The only person to play Jason more than once. Oh, so that's, mm. that's a pretty good legacy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There have been other guys who played the character, but one time each. So. Now, why is that? How come they never had the same person come back, uh, besides you? I don't know. I, you'd have to ask them. I'm not sure. Yeah. Would, for me, they said it was based on the performance, so they wanted me to keep doing it. No, that's good. That's good. Now, how did you get a start into acting? I've been a stuntman for 40 years, almost 40 years. So that's how I got my start and graduated into killing people. <laughs> I haven't killed anybody today. So just, I know that's your next question. So <laughs> I'll, I might as well keep my distance. I don't want to be victim number one. So. And you really think you'll get away if you keep your distance, Larry? Come on. They, yeah, always right. think, I, I, they always think they can get away by running. It's not going to happen. I know the shortcuts. You're going to trip when you think you're safe and uh, all that stuff. So. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so what was the most toughest stunt that you've ever had to do? Oh, you know, some of the fire stunts I did as Jason are pretty, uh, pretty hard to deal with. and. Considering I got burned doing a fire stunt before that, it was a little hard to do, but uh, but I loved it. I I loved playing the character, and I'd love to come back. What are you working on now? Like, what's what's your next? Um, got a bunch of movies coming up. I did one called Smothered. Uh, I did one called Death House. Old Thirty Seven. 
Love in the Time of Monsters, which a couple of those are comedies, a couple of them are not. Uh, I'm uh, fairly violent in some of them. Uh, got a couple new ones coming up that I'm doing and uh, working more than ever. So it keeps me uh, less violent when I keep working. <laughs> so I probably won't kill anybody. But very nice talking to you, Larry. Yeah, nice, nice talking to you. Do Watch you have a you back on the way out. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do you have a website if people want to follow your work? Uh, KaneHowderKills.com. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Hi, this is Tyro Man. I'm at Waka Con 2016. I'm talking with Kirk mainly. How are you doing, Kirk? I'm doing great. Great to see you. Thanks for uh, talking with me. So tell us a little bit about your work that you do here. Uh, I'm an illustrator yeah. and uh, comic book artist. And uh, recently, about uh, about the middle of season four of The Walking Dead, I decided to start doing uh, what the, what I call tribute pieces. Uh, they're all episode specific. So an episode will take place, and then I will uh, illustrate the highlights of that particular episode. Uh, as opposed to a lot of the art you see at shows like this is um, portraits and collages and things like that. Whereas these are almost kind of like mini uh, comic book single panel expressions of that episode. So that's kind of become my niche. Wow, that's a cool niche to be in. Yeah. Now you also produce a comic book, right? You yes, I'm that? also the illustrator and co-creator for a comic book called Z Girl and the Four Tigers which is a self-published independent comic book. Uh, you can get that online through uh, our website, which is zgirl.org. And um, it is a story of a female zombie warrior who is centuries old and is the leader of a special ops team that fights monsters and demons. And her teammates are the tigers. And uh, they are made up of four human hosts of ancient Chinese warrior spirits. Ah. So it's got a lot of uh, adventure and mysticism. Uh, it's not really a zombie book, but she's a zombie. Okay. So it kind of, uh, the uh, elevator pitch is that it's uh, um, G.I. Joe meets, uh, what did I say? G.I. Joe meets Hellboy, okay. if it was done by George Romero. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. So there, that's that. But uh, here today, I'm, I'm not really f uh, fe featuring uh, Z-Girl. We're featuring the, my Walking Dead tribute yeah. art. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. No now, how did you get started in that? Uh, just cool. drawing from Thanks. when I was little, you yeah. know, just drawing all the time. I was a big comic book nut and big fan of uh, comic books and uh, would uh, want to try and recreate what I saw in the comics. And that kind of got me started on that. And then uh, I find that I get a lot of inspiration from the, the things that, uh, that I like uh, in, in the pop culture. So comic books are one, but also things like The Walking Dead have become big inspirations for me. You know? What was your first big piece, the professional piece? Uh, professional piece? I did some work for DC in a, okay. in a book called uh, The Big Book of Urban Legends. Okay. Uh, I don't know if people remember that. that was kind of my first big break uh, a while back, and uh, that was exciting. Oh, so, okay. yeah. From there, it's been you know, lots of different things. Now, people want to check out your work and follow yeah, you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, uh, my work and uh, more about my stuff can be found online at, bat, uh, I'm sorry, at uh, studiokm.com is okay. my website. And then I also tweet at, at batmankm and on Instagram at, at batmankm as well. Okay. Um, I also, all my Walking Dead stuff is in a DeviantArt gallery, uh, and it's also batmankm at DeviantArt. Okay. So uh, through those uh, those places, you can see lots more of my work. Oh, that sounds great! Excellent. Right. Now, do you do a lot of conventions besides uh, marketing? Uh, I, so I do. I do. Yeah, I, I do New York Comic Con. Okay. I've done Terrific Con, which is down in Connecticut. Okay. Um, I've done San Diego. Uh, most recently, I've been doing a lot of the Walking Dead, uh, Walker Stalker shows. Okay. New Jersey, here, Philly's coming up. Um, because I also uh, do the official show posters. Okay. Uh, the show hires me to illustrate the, the show posters. This show, yep. this show is the, um, the Boston show, so it features Quincy Market and uh, uh, zombies that have on a lot of the uh, college uh, apparel, you know, Harvard and BU and then the Dead, Dead Sox. Sox. Dead Sox. <laughs> so, um, so as I've been doing those, it's uh, kind of tied in with my 
tribute art, so it's been kind of a, a natural fit. So I do right. a lot of those conventions. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks for taking yeah. the time to talk no, to us. Thank you for, uh, for spending some time with me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thanks. All right, take care. Hi, I'm Tywin Man. I'm at Waka StockCon 2016. I'm talking with Scott Straka. How are you doing, Scott? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. So you're a professional artist? Yes, I'm a celebrity and character freelance portrait artist. Okay, and how did you get started doing that? Basically, um, I just, I'm a big fan of like movies and everything. That's why a lot of the stuff I do is movie-based and not comic version-based. That's why, because I'm a big fan of a lot of actors and stuff. And then about three years ago, I got hired to by an actor to do my first thing, and then that caught on once people saw that I did that, and it just kind of went from there. Wow. Started doing cons. I'm okay. oh, sorry. Yeah, I started doing cons, and then uh, I didn't even realize a world like this existed, where like it's <laughs> it's so much because I wasn't really involved in the scene at all, and then I got addicted just like everybody else. Sorry. <laughs> they cool. sucked me in, and then here I am, right? right? Who was the first actor that contacted you? Um, I don't know if what I should say. Guys? Yeah, I don't know. You don't know what I'm saying? I mean, I, Depends. He's from Sons of Anarchy. I can say that. Okay. Yeah, just in case <laughs> for uh, rights and stuff. I don't know if I should. <laughs> Sorry. You can edit that, right? Just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So who, who has contacted you that kind of surprised you? Like, wow. Maybe. Um. Oh, like what's the big name that you went? Wow, and so and so. Like. I just know. I just did a podcast logo for Dave Sheridan, which most people know him as Doofy from Scary Movie. Okay. I just okay. did his logo. That'll be coming out in a week or two. Um, I've been from people from Walking Dead I've worked for, from um, some Marvel people, and then just anything. You can see, like, I have a little bit of every fandom there is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Supernatural, Z Nation people I'm, I work for, and uh, yeah, it's just a lot, of, a lot of different everything, you know, just a little bit. Yeah, cool. Now, how did you get started in that? Like, did you grow up drawing? Like uh, I mean, I've been drawing my whole life, but um, not exactly portraits yes. like I, I did do like some comic stuff and more character like styles like full body and everything and then um, like I said like I just when I really look into it like I want to draw people mm -hmm. and when I draw the actors what do you care about most is their face right. unless they're wearing a costume like a lot right. of the superheroes have outfits that are iconic with the chest logos or anything right. but you know other than that you care about their eyes and you care about their face and that's what that's what the first thing you recognize them from so you kind of stuck with that and then that's how it all became. Yeah, cool, cool. Now, do you have a website if people want to check out I do. I mean, work, I Facebook think, is my main thing I use. I'm obviously on Twitter and Instagram and everything like that. And it's just Scott Straka Art. You can find it on, it's the same thing for all those. And then uh, my website that you can order anything from and look at all my stuff. I have prints, t-shirts. I have a book I came out with last year. Oh, okay. All different types of stuff. Um, it's scottstrakaart.storeenvy.com. Okay. It's my official website that I use. Oh, cool. Now, do you have other conventions you go to, or is it mostly um, about to start? I have your first one? 38 conventions this year, and oh, I'm a guest wow. at a lot of them. Wow. I do all the Walker Stalkers and Heroes and Villains, so there's 14 of those this year, wow. and that's you know a big that's a third of them almost. Yeah, and I do, I'm all over the United States pretty much, and uh, yeah, like I said, there's I probably have like a few weekends off here and there, <laughs> and that's about it. But when I'm right. home working, it's like commission stuff. Like when I get hired, I have to do that from right. home. So. Right. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah, cool. Right? Well, thanks for taking time to talk with us. Yeah, Appreciate thank you very it. much. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ty Man. I'm at Walker Stock Con 2016, and I'm talking with Michael Kaleo. How are you doing, sir? Doing good, doing good. It's a good show. Nice yeah, meeting you. Good show so far? Oh, nice to see you. <laughs> good show? Yeah, yeah, it's a good show. A lot of really nice people, and uh, it's cool seeing some of the stars of the show and selling some artwork. Yeah. <laughs> so how long have you been doing the artwork? Uh, I've been Arts. drawing comic book style work since I was a kid, but uh, I've been doing it professionally for you know about three or four years. What was your first piece? Like what, what got you started? What was the first professional thing? Uh, first professional thing, I, I you know I worked on. Um, I worked uh, as like basically a concept artist for some toys okay. years and years ago, um, and then I just sort of started taking on a lot of commission work. So, you know, someone want to 
drawing a Superman or their own character, and from there, kind of just turn it into what it is now. All right, cool. Now, who inspired you, like, growing up? Like, what artists oh, and stuff? Um, probably uh, Joe Mad and Jim Lee were the two biggest inspirations. I mean, that was those were the artists that I, you know, copied as a kid okay. and kind of learned the the basics. Okay, cool. So, do you have a comic book out now? You just yeah, you do. Okay, actually, cool. yeah, um, just actually this week, uh, a book that I'm working on called B Squad uh, was working on called B Squad um, came out digitally, and then it should be out in print in I think September. Um, okay. So I believe it's bsquadcomic.com, and that's where you could find it now. And then eventually, it'll be on Comicsology and all the other websites. What is that comic about? Like, uh, it's kind of like a, it, it's a, it's like a misfit band of, uh, it's kind of like, I, I would say it's like Suicide Squad, but with uh, more comedy and um, a little bit more on the like comedy, clever adventure side. Uh, so, you know, misfit band of characters put together and put in these kind of crazy situations. Is this one of your first conventions or do you go to a lot of conventions? Uh, I do a lot of conventions. Uh, this, this is, um, this is my first time in Boston, but uh, I've, I've been doing shows for, for some years and um, kind of get used to traveling around and, and meeting fans all over the country, which is great. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, do you have a website if people want to check, follow you and check all your out? Yeah, like yeah. There's a, there's a few ways. Um, okay. On uh, Facebook, I have a art page, which is just Michael Calero Art. Uh, and then I have Instagram, uh, which is just Michael Calero. Um, and then I have a portfolio page, which is just michaelcalero.com. So, you know, you have to have like six or seven yeah. social media pages, yeah. right? Uh, right. All right, cool. Cool. Well, thanks for taking hey, your time. Great talking to you. Yeah, good. All right. Enjoy the rest of the con. All right, thank you. Hi, Taiwo Man, and I'm at Walker Stalker 2016. I'm talking to Alyssa. Wait, how are you doing, Alyssa? Hi, it's Alicia. Alicia, I'm yes. sorry. No worries at all. How are you? Good, good. How's the show been going for you? The show has been so much fun. Cool. It's one of my favorite shows of all time, and I'm so glad I got to be on it. Yeah. So what episodes were you on? Like, what season was your character in? Uh, in season six. Season six. Can you tell us a little bit about the character you played in that? I played Paula, who has been fighting to survive ever since the beginning of the zombie apocalypse and she takes Carol and Melissa hostage, Carol and uh, Maggie hostage, sorry, mm -hmm. um, and we see a lot of parallels between her world and her group of people and the group that are kidnapped okay. and I think we start to realize that all the people that die in this scary new world have backstories and hearts and the people we may think are villains are actually just people struggling to survive just like everybody else. Cool. Now, what do you think would happen if there was an actual zombie apocalypse? Do you think you have the chops to survive? I think I'd be the first one to go. I, I just <laughs> don't know if I could deal with all of that blood and guts. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I still cringe when I watch the show. It's too <laughs> scary for me. Yeah. And my dog hates it. He runs away if I watch Walking Dead. He doesn't like it one bit. He's terrified of the zombie sounds. <laughs> cool. He actually looks at the screen and growls, and then he runs into the other room. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So you've been on, yeah. the sh on other shows as well, right? My whole life, since I was seven years old. Seven? Yeah. Wow. What was the first one? It was called Dune. It was directed by David oh, okay. Lynch. That, yeah. That was cool. So you, yeah. always, you started out in the sci-fi stuff. Yep, I sure did. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So I love you? your outfit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Tyro Man is a very flashy dresser. Yes, I, I tried. Yes. Yeah, you got it, right? It's very, you, ha you have to. <laughs> no one could mistake you for anyone else. No, no. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> She's cracking up over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So how did you, like, what do you find is the most difficult part in acting? I've been doing it so long, I so don't long. find it a challenge. I just, I love disappearing into other characters. And I think it's the opposite of when I make music in a way, because when I'm making music, it's just me. And when I'm playing characters, it's me, but under the guise of somebody else. Right, right. So... 
It's now, how did, you get started, how did you get started writing music? When did that start? I've been doing it my whole life also, but I only started getting brave enough to play it out in public about eight years ago, and I've never looked back. It's just been like a snowball. I started putting it out and started playing shows, and it's become such a big part of my life that I know it'll be, it'll be something I do for the rest of my life alongside acting. Yeah, it's cool. the right That's, balance for me. Yes, and you also do writing, right? Yes, I write my own music. I write for other artists too, um, and I'm spending more time in Nashville than LA these days. Oh, so we'll see how that goes. It. Yeah. So, what, what projects are you working on right now? Right? Um, I just finished the last season of Nashville on ABC. I'm in Twin Peaks, which airs next year on Showtime. I just did a movie with James Franco um, called Mississippi Requiem, um, set in William Faulkner's 1930s in the South. I have a film premiering at the Portland Film Festival oh. in August called um, Six Love Stories. Oh, nice. And I am about to do my fourth Hallmark Christmas movie because oh. I love them and they make me happy. <laughs> That's good. Who doesn't love a good Hallmark Christmas movie? Who doesn't? Yes. It's great. So nice talking to yeah. you. So do you have a website if people want to follow you? Oh, I sure do. On? It's www.alishawitmusic.com. Oh, cool. Great. Yes. Do you do a lot of conventions or is it mostly the... I've been doing oh. them for a few months now since I started, since the Walking Dead episode so, came out. Oh, and it's cool. it's great to meet all these nice people. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks for taking time to talk with us. Thanks, Tyro, Thank man. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Tyra Mann, and I'm at Walker Stock Con 2016. I'm talking to Kerry with Pause for Cure. How are you doing, Kerry? I'm doing very well, thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about your organization? So about. Pause for Cure was started in 2008 in memory of my dog, Nico, that lost his battle with cancer. So we provide financial assistance for dogs and cats who can, um, for the parents who cannot provide, um, cannot financially afford it. Sorry. Okay. And um, we are a nonprofit charity based out of Massachusetts, but we do help throughout the United States. Oh, that's great. That's great. So, the, what's, so the site is pause for a cure. Pause for a cure. It's P A W S. The number four a cure c u r e dot org. Okay. And you want to, so you started because you lost your you sadly lost your pet. To I cancer. I did. So Nico so passed away. That. He had cancer. He had um, two different kind of cancers: adenocarcinoma and melanoma. Here's Nico right here. The, um, so I have all this information on here. So we do have um, events throughout the year. Our annual charity walk is in um, Wakefield around the lake every May. So we had our ninth annual walk um, May, uh, May of this year. And next okay. year we'll have a, um, it's a big event and it's a lot of fun. And we have other events that we do throughout the year and we have our own events as well. Okay, cool. cool. We have 100% of the, um, the proceeds go to the animals in need. Okay, great. Yeah. That's great. Well, thanks. Tell well, us about it. Thank you very much. Hope to see you there. Yeah, good. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tyler Man at Walker Stock Con 2015, 2016, and I'm talking with Sean. How are you doing, Sean? Good. How are you? Good, good. So tell us a little about uh, Play Gaming for Life. So this, about. we're Extra Life. Um, we more or less represent uh, the Boston chapter of Extra Life as far as uh, going out to events and recruiting for a 24-hour gaming marathon. Uh, event details can be found at extra-life.org. Uh, more or less it works like any other marathon except for instead of walking or running, you're gaming for 24 hours. Uh, you can choose to split up that 24 hours for uh, however it's convenient for you. You don't have to do it all at once. Uh, the way it works is if you sign up, you get yourself a web page donation portal to a hospital that you choose in the network, any one of the net, uh, hospitals across the entire U.S. for Children's Miracle Network or in Canada as well. Uh, and then on game day, you basically game for 24 hours and you just share out your uh, web portal page and get donations to the hospital of your choice. Ah, oh, sounds great. Great cause. It is. So how did uh, last year's go? How much money did you raise last year? Last year we raised about $8.6 for the entire CMN network across the country. Wow. Uh, we did about 250000 for Boston Children's alone, which is who we're here representing and helping okay. out. So. Thank you. Right, so they can check out the site and sign up. And yeah, once again, that's that's extra-life.org, um, and go there, and it has all the uh, the questions you might need. You can sign up to participate. Well, a song about never saying never and never being told what you can or cannot do. This is one of us.
A one, two, three. Fighting, or when fighting got to me, I looked to find examples on the field of chivalry, and I saw mighty arms much stronger than my arms could ever be. So I thought perhaps that field was not for me. But still I stayed and watched the fighting till one figure stood apart in armor newly fashioned and a helm more pot than art. But each blow was thrown with honor and the lightness of the heart. So I took that step which soon became a start Cause she was not the biggest fighter Nor one to raise a fuss But I remember being proud that she was one of us And we might never stand together In a shield wall side by side Because of her I lift my sword with pride was ladylike and lively, not the type you would expect, with a braver heart than many and a slot shot to respect. And I guess she'd once decided this was where she'd like to be, and I thought if she could do it, why not me? Cause she was not the biggest fighter, nor one 